Hey, what's up you guys? Welcome back. Back out in the desert. A little cool this morning. I got some rain pending in the distance over here, which is a good thing. Could always use rain out in the desert, but uh, I'm out here to shoot. So if I said I was excited, I think it would be a bit of an understatement today. Um, it's a gun I've been looking forward to for a long time. AKS 74U. It uh, finally cleared paperwork. This is a regular 74. You see the height difference? I got the buttstocks lined up and they have the exact same buttstock on it. So the very end of this barrel comes to the end of the gas block. So talking a good eight inches shorter. All right, you guys ready? AKS. 74U time. If I said I was excited, I... Well, well, well. Not really what I wanted to see out of my gun, tell you that. Today was supposed to be a super exciting day for for Chris. Turned into went from a from a high to a low really fast, but the I guess these things happen. So 
my AKS 74U that uh, I bought, waited about 11 months for, 10, 10 or 11 months NFA stuff, and uh, got it out here. And the the bullet guide, if you're not familiar, but the the bullets when they get taken out of the magazine and get ramped up into the barrel, there's a bullet guide. And for some reason, I don't know, the ammo that I'm using is the longer ammo. There is a couple of different types of ammo for this as far as bullet length. I tried mil spec and I tried the regular classic. And once in a while they would feed okay, but other times they just hit the, hit the barrel. So long story short, the, it's, it's, it has a problem with its feed ramp which sucks because it's a custom built gun that I didn't build myself. Oh, I just want to, I, I got to shoot some through it. I got, I think I got one full magazine through it without a jam. And uh, man, little sucker's got some, got some pop out the muzzle, right? I think it's gonna be great. It just has to be, has to be addressed. And I don't know if I'm gonna do it myself, which I might, it's my gun. You know, it's my gun now. I might do it myself because, I don't know. <laughs> if they couldn't do it right the first time, why give them a second chance? So they're a custom, custom builder, so I don't know. We'll see. But on that note, so I just, I had preloaded, I had preloaded, uh, I had four of the Tula Plum mags that I loaded last night. I had um, a Bakelite. I had... So I had a Russian Bakelite, four Russian Plums, I had a, a Bulgarian Circle 21 Brown, I had a Magpul uh, AK-74, which didn't fit. Uh, the feed lip was too fat because it's just plastic. Uh, I tried two different types of ammo and three or four different types, at least, at least three, maybe four different types of magazines. So I'll address that issue and we'll have to make a, an ac another video of, hey, I'm super excited. So today just turned into uh, taking out my frustrations by throwing AK lead downrange. So I shot some 74. I finished all those mags out through the 74. That's my 104 um, from Arsenal, and that thing just is a monster. I, it's it's such a good gun. It's such a beast. I got a uh, ALG trigger in there, so it's really nice trigger, kind of a more of a flat face trigger, and. Uh, it's good. It's a lot of fun. So I, I went ahead and cleared those mags out through that thing, but I did Didn't want to make it a total wasted day. I did bring out a gun to test fire and that's this one here Now this I built kind of I assembled it um, Came off of a this is this is kind of strange. So what you're seeing on here is East German furniture This is an East German furniture kit Okay, I know it looks kind of weird with the different colors, but that's that's the way it is, and you can see the East German stock. Now the parts kit is actually WBP Polska. It's a it's a Polish parts kit, one, and it's riding on a Morrissey receiver. It's on a, this is a, a Morrissey receiver, Polish parts kit, East German furniture. So it's kind of like it's. <laughs> If you look at World War II, when the Nazis, they went and invaded Poland, right? See, so East German furniture on a Polish, yeah, I don't know, that's a stretch. But, so, and I've also got the uh, PWS brake on here. So this is the same company that makes the brake for the SCAR. And it's the same company that I have that 300 Blackout pistol for. So I put this one together, myself. And this is uh, standard AK-47, right? So 7.62.39. And we're going to shoot this guy now because I just came out to test for it, make sure everything was okay before I made a video about it. But I'm here. Might as well shoot some, uh, some actual AK-47 kind of old school standby, right? Not none of them 74 little, little PP rounds. All right, here we go.
Not bad. Not bad. Feels good. So I look, I know I got a few AKs, but all my AKs are a little bit weird. They're either Vepers or they're arsenals with different trunnions in the back, whether it's a folder or a I didn't have any AKs that were just kind of like a standard AK pattern where I could change out the stock whenever I wanted to or put whatever furniture I wanted on or whatever grip. This being a Polish parts kit on a an American Morrissey receiver, as I said, I can I can outfit this however I want. Now, this East German, this East German kit, eh, it's it's a little bit rare. I wouldn't say it's like, hey, the sun came out for a second. Look at there, now you can see it in the sun. I wouldn't say it's ultra rare, but it's a little bit rare, and it's pretty nice. I mean, this is plastic. It's not bad on the cheek. But the reason I did this one, I bought the parts kit, and I had to, I had to do everything else myself. There's a lot I had to do. Get the trigger, get the trigger pins, you know, the, the obviously all the furniture, the muzzle device. Uh, I got I got the parts kit from Atlantic Firearms. It's one of the I've always said it's one of the places I get a lot of my AK stuff from. Really, I, really cool site. I like those guys, and the price was good. I got it, I don't know, four months ago or something. But I finally just got out to shoot it. So that being said, I wanted to be able to kind of you know if I wanted to try Magpul stuff, whatever I wanted to try, I needed a platform to do that. None of my other AKs really do that. I got two different Yugos, which is completely different stuff. And uh, an arsenal. I've got a, you know two folders that have different trunnions. This is really the only, just kind of, besides my my Saiga, right? My Saiga is a Saiga, so it's, it's a little bit unique in and of itself. Now I've got kind of a base, base platform. Now this one here is awesome because it's super light. It's set up, this is set up so I can actually carry an AK, like pack around an AK if I need to. Instead of, uh, you know, Yugos are awesome, but they're a bit heavier, you know. Get an AK that's stamped. It, this is kind of like what you would think of, um, you know, Wasser 10 or, you know, one of the Sentry Arms uh, deals that they're doing now, seed 39 V2s. But being that it's Polish, top notch. I mean, if you don't know anything about AKs, Polish AKs are pretty good. They're pretty darn good. I'd rank them up there with the Bulgarian AKs. Um, and this is a, obviously it's a kit from a, you know an older gun that's been put together again on a different receiver. So even though I had a, a high coming out here for the 74U and then a low, hey, those things happen. It's going to take a little bit of gunsmithing. I'll get it fixed and I'll be back out here and that thing's gonna be awesome. But the good news is, this one that I put together works awesome. Super lightweight, I love it. It's like, it's so, it doesn't feel like, it feels like those 74s. Super lightweight, I'm really, really happy about how this gun is done. I'm gonna load up a few more mags of this. For the 47, my Polish Wonder, this is what I'm shooting through it. So I've got ye old brown bear, 762, 39, uh, 123, these are both, 123 grain um, steel case. So these Wolf here I've had for years. I bought a case of these probably five or six years ago. So this is before I had a lot of AKs to shoot. I only had a Yugo and an Arsenal. So this stuff's good. This stuff's good. Both of these are really good. Um, really affordable here on the Brown Bear. So that's what I'm shooting. AK-47. Uh, wolf, wolf. Setting up a pretty big dust cloud down there. I can't see the target. So this trigger I have in here, ALG trigger, you see that? Kind of, kind of, uh, 
not really a flat face trigger, but not a not a st strong bow. I like I like those ones that are somewhere in between the really exaggerated curve and the flat face. This one here is very nice. Very nice trigger. Again, I said I was just coming out to test this one, to test fire it, really. So I just grabbed the first two mags I found. One was a Tula Russian Bakelite, and the other was just this steel mag. You know, a lot of these steel mags are hard to identify unless they have stamps on them. But this one, I think, is a, a Yugo mag because it, it bolt holds open. I think those are the ones. I don't ever use those, so I'm not... This is probably the only one I have. This one may have come with that little short Yugo that I got. The little pistol? It's possible. Alright, we're going to go up to about 200 yards now. Flies and bees out here. This is the transition of like, the, not the best time to be out in the desert. You got the ants, you got the flies, you got bees. But when it gets cold, it's go time. Iron sights are pretty good. I could drift it a little bit. It's just just off to the right, so I could drift that front sight. But again, this is first shots. Really, it was just designed to be test fire. There you go, see, bolt hole open. So if you're a, if you're a uh, AR guy or, you can't just say AR, but if you're a bolt hole open kind of person, you can get these mags. I, I think they're Yugo mags with the bolt hole open feature. It's just on the follower, you know, it has a, has a place to catch it just like it does on AR. But if you shoot MP5, if you shoot, you know, all these other guns, they're not bolt hole open e either, so. Ah, uh, need some water. All right, well, that's the end of my day. Um, this whole video literally could be, or this whole day could be a bloopers video. I brought out my, my FNX 45 tactical with the uh, threaded, threaded barrel. Because back when I got this gun, I also bought a suppressor for it. Hey, why don't you check that gun? All right, there you go. Feel happy? All right, so... I bought a suppressor for it. I bought an AAC Tyrant 45 for this when I bought this. The suppressor came in, so I was gonna make a video with this after the AK video. I loaded up uh, three mags. I got, I've got three mags. Now this shoots from 15 round mags, which is awesome, awesome. So I loaded up three mags, it was all ready. Took out the suppressor, I had the suppressor in the, in the bag with this because it's got a place to put the suppressor. Took it out of its sleeve, and it was my full-size hybrid with my quick disconnect. It was a wrong suppressor. I grabbed it last night, put it in the bag. You know, I just kind of gear it all up and leave it in the safe. <clears throat> I grabbed the wrong suppressor, so... <laughs> it's been a folly of errors. Some being my fault, some not being my fault. But, uh, yeah, I'm curious to see how this vid will turn out. What, like, what... I don't even know. I was so frustrated when I was shooting the AK or trying to shoot the AKS 74U. I'm like, because it kept feed jamming, you know. I don't think I showed it on camera what it looked like, but it, basically, if this is the barrel, right, this is the barrel, and it's supposed to go boom, it hits a feed ramp and feeds up in like this. Whoa, demonetized. All right, it, it would hit, it would just hit the edge of the barrel. The feed ramp wasn't kicking the bullet up. So instead of kicking up and going in, it was just going straight, bam, and hitting the barrel. Now on some Saigas and Vepers, before you convert them as they're brought in, they have to have special magazines where in the magazine, it's the feed ramps are built into the mag. Well, it shouldn't be that way with this. This is, uh, this is not that way. You could, cause I can see, they, um, the feed ramp 
it's riveted in where it's supposed to be. Because I've actually, I when I customized my Vepper, I put in my own um, feed ramp. I don't know if that, they call it something else, bullet guide. They call it bullet guide. I put in my own bullet guide, um, and mine was, I had to drill it, tap it, and Loctite it, and it worked great. I did it. But this one here is riveted in, so it's supposed to use any standard mag, not a, a mag with feed ramps in it. But when when I when I come back, I'll bring this back out with the suppressor Tyrant, and because I'm pretty excited to to um, check that one out. Okay, you guys, that's gonna do it for me. The funny thing is, I thought it was gonna be a nice, cool day too, and it's just the sun came out, and it's it's a uh, it's a bake factory out here. It's like uh, Betty Crocker's mini bake ovens with those lights in it. Yeah, 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 yeah. What a day. What a morning. What a couple hours. I'm glad you guys were here. Comedy of errors. <laughs> Full-on blooper video. All right, that's going to do it. I'm out of here. Thanks for watching.